So thank you all for your engagement thus far. Um, we have our final speaker coming to the stage. Um, our speaker is Div, Div Manicum. And Div will be talking about infrastructure, or Div works with infrastructure services portfolio, um, marketing and management at Lenovo. But Div's presentation this afternoon will be on API narrative, um, her, her true story of working with APIs. And so we're looking forward to your talk, Div. Thank you, Shori, and thank you, everyone. Um, I hope you can hear me okay and see my screen. Looks great, thank you. Right. Thank you. Well, I'm super excited to be here. Um, today, I'll be talking to you about an API story, um, about how I got into the API world, and where I would like to take you all is on a journey. Um, I loved Scott's talk and how we talked about communication being important. I'm going to take it one step further about storytelling. Imagine a world where business and IT, uh, developers, IT, uh, architects, everyone's speaking the same language of APIs with shared OKRs of business influence and impact. And let's say we all wake up to be inspired by the power of APIs. We all are here for a reason at this conference. And if we can all tell the world the same narrative, whether it's from API design to API lifecycle management. So in this session, strap on, we're going to talk about how I joined the API movement as the product marketing manager for API management at Boomi in 2016, what I learned there, and also share a little bit about in 2020, how I started advocating for women and APIs to bring diversity and belonging around the world. So let's dive right in. So first and foremost, a few topics that I'll be covering uh, quickly, a little bit about me, um, what an API looks like at a business viewpoint, the rise of the API economy that I've seen in the past five years, and also talk a little bit about the digital transformation trends that we are seeing and what that actually means for APIs. And then also share my story about uh, women in APIs and how I joined as a member and as a co-facilitator there. All right. Um, first and foremost, a little bit about me. This is what I call the picture perfect introduction, something that I piloted five years ago. And it's one of those ideas that's worth sharing um, uh, where I am and where I would like to focus my energy and time on these days is you either find me at the Product Marketing Alliance or at Women in APIs. And I'm also an advocate at the uh, World Happiness Foundation and um, a proud Google local guide. So why this session and why me probably is in a nutshell a question that you're all asking. When I joined Boomi in 2016, I didn't know much about APIs other than what it was. And even with my technical background, I knew that APIs were important, but not to the extent once I started diving deep into it. This is where I like to use one principle of mine that has been core to who I am, which is if you can't explain it simply, you don't understand it well enough. And I think this is where Scott's session was really helpful to talk about communication and how you communicate that message. And so I'm gonna use that same methodology, what I've used in my career, and also share what that means as we go forward for the API economy. So let's dive right into what is an API and what does a business viewpoint look like? So this was a question that I was given five months into my job where we had to explain to our sales force what an api is and why api management one of our core offerings was important for our customers and how can sales actually start selling this to um, our customers where integration was a core offering so i started off here where and of course it's api not I ipa and as much as we all love food i figured let me actually take you through a restaurant journey and actually compare APIs so it's an analogy um, that helps them. So I told them that, hey, everybody goes to a restaurant. This is where we order dishes. The restaurant does uh, their awesome work. They put up the recipe together and they give you the dish back. APIs are similar where what you're placing is kind of like an order, the list of commands that you're supplying. When the program uses those commands, then you get a response back. And that's what an API is. Now, you might be wondering why APIs have so much of a focus. And it's primarily because now you're starting to see a lot of products that are now becoming a platform. And everybody wants to become a platform these days. And so that's the big shift that I have seen. Um, and I would love to hear from folks on the um, 
attending today if you agree or disagree or if there are other aspects that is driving that focus today. So the other set that I realized was APIs are everywhere and it's just that people don't know that it exists. So I usually tell them, hey, take a look at your smartphone and you'll see them right there. From searching the weather on Google, which is something that I do every morning, I'm like, what's the weather today? Is there a thunderstorm coming or not? And then all the orders that we place, whether it's your retail store, the restaurant orders, um, Uber rides, or uh, even checking your balance on the phone with your banking APIs. These are all powered through APIs and we just don't know it. So trying to translate what APIs mean for our end customers and why does it matter? Why does it matter for the business to actually invest in APIs was something that I got really passionate about. So I would encourage all of you to maybe answer this question. We all love a good API. So what's your favorite API that you have leveraged today? And I would love to see some comments and maybe surely towards the end, if there are some good responses, we could um, share it broadly with the group. And this was where I realized that we are on a trend. And this is where I call the rise of API economy. And the rise of API economy is not just about, hey, APIs have been there for a very long time. We've started seeing different variations of it. We've gone all the way from REST to RESTful, to RESTless, there are different variations. What is driving all of that is SaaS to XSaaS, right? We have said we have software as a service and now we want it to be everything as a service where any tangible object can be offered as a service. And this is something that I've um, come across from Rakuten where they've talked about the evolution of APIs, whether it's APIs that are feeding and analyzing data because yes, data is probably the central um, service that customers want to offer for any API consumer, whether it's an extension to an existing business process or whether it's driving that end-to-end -end operational aspects of the business. And this is great because we have started seeing that happen more and more in the past decade. But the other thing that's also driving it is making sure that we're thinking about where is the future of APIs. This could be in existing, in existing business models. It could be newer use cases. A few trends that I've seen um, from the Rapidon blog was around better experience on mobile devices, providing new business models around event-driven APIs, better standardization for APIs, whether it's your open API initiative or it's working with different um, programming language agnostic tools on API specifications. The rise of microservices have actually led to driving uh, or delivering these APIs. And then we also have the last two, which is how do we build an API driven architecture for end user apps? And this is, this is a beautiful quote that I saw where Steve Jobs often said, there is an app for that when the app store was kicked off and when we had this app revolution. Now I think that we will be at that point in future where we would say there's an API for that. And I think they're already there. So it's just a matter of us bringing that economy together and also um, having our business stakeholders understand the need for it. And I think the one that caught my attention the most being on the business side was APIs as super highways for enterprises. Every enterprise knows that we want to break down silos. There's a reason why we have started seeing, seeing those evolutions and everybody wants to give the customer a seamless experience. So how can we do that? And APIs, I think, is that single thread that can bring internal departments, external APIs, all of them together and actually support whether it's data analytics or whether it's um, other uh, business process management aspects that you're bringing forward. So that's, I think, one of an, one interesting aspect to think through. Now, what we also had at Boomi when we when I was part of the, the team, we talked about open banking and the PSD2 uh, regulation. Now, this was an attempt to bring that end-to-end -end data management, whether we're talking about APIs or integration, providing that mediation layer so that you could actually look at what, um, what Scott was talking about, the legacy, uh, aspects of it, and then also play an active role in that API economy because the shift is happening. And with PSD2, it's driving that um, API economy forward. And I think conferences like this is helping banks and other institutions 
understand the need for a mediated API strategy, but also make sure that we have the right frameworks um, and potentially even drive that to be revenue streams. This is where I think we started looking at where is the linkage between digital transformation and API trends? So let me dive a little further into some examples that I've seen. And then also knowing that over the past year, we probably have seen more need for APIs to be leveraged in the right ways, not just for security reasons, but also for better uh, user experiences. And that's, that's the direction that enterprises are going. Everybody wants to be a player in this market, but at the same time, they know that there are, it's going to take them a, a long way to get there or, or even find better ways to work the way we do today. So this is what I call the sorry state of digital transformation because every organization wants to improve their interactions, whether it's with their customers, partners, or even other lines of business. And when Forrester did this survey in 2018, um, which they call the sorry state because when we when they ask the question, which of the following describes your firm's digital transformation, everyone said, hey, currently underway, which was great. They, are, they at least have a good uh, understanding of where they are. And then 21% all the way on the right said, hey, we think we are completed. Our digital transformation is done. And I think that's the biggest mistake because your transformation is a journey. It's not an end state. And that's the shift that we are starting to see more and more. Um, and I think the past year with the pandemic probably accelerated a lot of the requirements that customers had, requirements that uh, retail stores had, where they said, we want, to be, we want to be on that digital transformation, but it just accelerated the path. Now we have options to um, shop online and buy uh, and pick up on curbside. We never had that option before, right? So those are shifts that we are starting to see and I strongly believe that APIs are going to drive that mission for us forward. The other piece, and this is an interesting aspect, right? When you think about, we say digital transformation is the goal, there are different aspects of it. And we asked, um, as part of the Forrester uh, team asked the question, what are the primary focus for that improvement? And they realized that the primary focus is not just um, across cost reduction or productivity, it's the piece at the bottom. It's accelerating business transformation. And if you look at the dates and the numbers, what used to be about 12% now has risen to over 50%. And that growth is what we are looking to capitalize on. And then you also know that our customers are not just here to say, hey, can you just piece two things together and I hope it works. Customers are looking for an end-to-end -end customer journey. And they want to complete that. They don't really care about the silos that exist or how you're going to make it work. They just want you to make it work. So that fragmented data and organizations are probably impeding the um, customer journeys that we have today. So this is probably a big learning for us. But then what does that mean for um, an API-powered digital transformation? And this is a, a study that Google did um, trying to identify what the top five trends are. And it's amazing to see how the top five trends have popped up because this is probably what you're all seeing as well, right? The increasing SaaS and hybrid cloud API deployments, um, analytics becoming a competitive edge. Everybody wants some flavor of analytics, uh, whether it's visualizations or dashboards in any shape or form, AI and ML is picking up more and more uh, and API power uh, management we also seeing an API ecosystem as an innovation driver. And then you also have API security and governance. Because the reality is what we don't want to happen is you have APIs everywhere and we really don't have a good governance model for it. And that's where the API management came into existence to say, hey, let us help you make sure that it's not a wild, wild west out there. We actually have the right governance and security models. Um, and everyone's familiar with some of the breaches that happen. These are things that we want to be very careful about. So if all of this is great, and this is where the direction that we are looking for API trends, what I have learned uh, is it's not a zero-sum game. We have two sides of the coin, and this is where I think as 
teams, we can all do better in bringing, bringing the diversity and inclusion together. Where if the, um, if Gartner and Slash Data are saying that, hey, we see some trends here where initially what used to be one or two people that are integration specialists, then they drove to become ad hoc business users. Those are integrators. We started seeing citizen integrators where these are business users that know that they need information. And so we started seeing going from 1x to 100x. And then now we have these digital integrators with AI and ML, and that's accelerating the number. We don't even know, is it maybe a thousand X, maybe a 10,000 X. And we're also seeing this uh, growth with the amount of women developers that we have um, in the organizations today. And so Slash Data ran the survey where they look every quarter on what that growth is and um, looking at the developer uh, population. And it has actually doubled its share in two years, which is very exciting, uh, which makes me feel confident that we are on the right path. And today, um, there are about 5 million female developers in the world, based on the uh, Slash Data Developer Economics Report. This gives me hope that we are on the right path. And this is where I would love for us to build together the next evolution of APIs and introduce you to the women in APIs community that I'm part of, and that I'm super excited that we have a space and an ecosystem within our API Days global community to drive the focus and make sure that we are actually helping drive the future of APIs because we know it's evolving. We know that it needs a better balance to get um, different creative solutions. We know that for that better balance, we need to be attracting and retaining more women in the industry. And Women in APIs is an example of a community initiative doing just that. So it's exciting to see some of the programs that uh, are there by peer-to-peer -peer speaking and networking events. One of the reasons why I signed up myself for uh, the uh, API Days conference was because of Women in APIs. And you can always join and learn more at apidays.global. So definitely check it out because we have some really good speaking and networking events coming up in September. And this is a great way to meet other um, fellow women in the APIs community and also accelerate your growth, whether you're looking to speak at another conference or even just uh, build some uh, mentoring opportunities right there. So that's primarily what I wanted to cover today, but I'll leave you with one last thought. And I thought this was really interesting. Um, I attended a conference called World Fest Live last week. And he meant, uh, Leo Gopal mentioned API equal to assume positive intent. And this is where, when you are interacting with the business, assume positive intent because everybody is working towards those shared goals. It's just that we are not communicating in the same way probably, or that we are just not taking the time to build the empathy to understand the other side. So this is my story of API and me, uh, and I appreciate you taking the time I'll turn it over to Shirley and uh, respond to any questions that we have. And you can always reach me at LinkedIn. So thank you so much for that. That was wonderful. Thank you, Shirley. We just have um, a few questions for you. I so I mean the first one is really, and you talked a, a little bit about you know your involvement with women in APIs. I just would like you know if you could offer some best practices for organizations who are trying to recruit, um, you know, a more diverse staff or a more diverse pool of people, but also not just diverse, you know, really promoting equity within their companies. And then I guess the, the second part of that question is, what advice do you have for women and other groups of people who aren't, you know, historically represented in API um, who do have interest in the field? Well, I think it's exciting to even just look at our own conference. I believe uh, the organizers had mentioned that we have about 20 person speakers who are women, and that's a positive direction, right? We ideally want to get to a point where we probably have 50% women uh, or more. And organizations like Women in APIs are helping give us that space or safe space, if you will, so that we can actually feel comfortable and confident that yes, what we have to say matters. I always hesitated to go and present at an API conference because I always said I'm not technical enough, uh, even with my technical uh, engineering degrees. And 
I think that's the shift that we want to see, that I think everyone brings a unique perspective and we just have to brave ourselves and, and leverage the ecosystem that's there to give you the confidence to speak and share your viewpoints. Because at the end of the day, there is a human aspect of APIs and I think we can all share that aspect together. For sure. And then in terms of what, you know, what organizations can do, can you speak a little bit more to that as well? So I think for organizations and um, this is something that I personally am passionate about is to bring uh, the equity and uh, diversity and belonging together, right? It's not just hiring uh, women talent in, in the API or technology industry itself, but it's also making sure that they um, are represented and that they have a belonging, right? They're right there. So making sure that we are giving them a space um, and also just look around the room uh, virtually when you are in meetings and are you giving women an opportunity to share their viewpoints? Because that's where diverse opinions and perspectives come together. So I would encourage all organizations to just look around and see how see how you can be an ally and actually help them uh, in their career growth. Yeah, for sure. And I would just add that you know, in addition to creating spaces for women, we also want to be mindful about creating spaces for you know other diversity and different um, social identities as well. So thank you for that. Um, our next question for you is just around um, digital transformation APIs. And so how do you suggest that we bridge the gap between the business side of things and the IT side of things? And also how do we engage all of the stakeholders who are involved? Um, one way is trying to understand and speak the same language, right? Um, when we when we put on our technical hats and when we are the API developers or uh, the API providers or API consumers, it's easy for us to stay focused on what we are trying to do today, but try to look at the long-term vision. What are the shared uh, business objectives or outcomes that you're looking to drive? And why does this matter for your end customer? Because at the, re the reason why you're building these solutions are for your end customer. So, Keeping that goal in mind, I think, will give us all the shared um, responsibility and also shared OKR to people. Thank you. And finally, how can we all speak the same language again? You, you've spoken at, um, you know, at great length about that, but how can we continue to speak the same language, particularly as we try to facilitate spaces where our consumers and our customers um, you know, can understand us, but also be part of the work um, that we're engaged in? Um, I think it all goes back to the customer journey. So making sure that if we are saying we want to actually build a seamless customer journey, it's not um, just the technology or the product aspect, but an end-to-end, -end, whether it's the service elements of it or bringing um, all the way from a customer looking at your website to understand what is it that you can offer um, to the development and the implementation, and then actually providing that service and delivery aspect of it. I think that's what makes it holistic, right? If I if I look at what retail had to do over the past uh, year, yeah. it's amazing to see the shift, but we made it happen, right? We didn't just say, oh, no, we don't have the technology. Sorry, you can't really shop. We said, we're going to make it happen. And it, the, the amazing folks from these um, organizations and even banks had to do the same thing, right? It's not just one industry that got impacted, it was everybody from retail to healthcare to banking to you name it, everybody had to change how we operated. And with this new future of work, um, things like uh, the previous presentation where we were talking about how do we communicate, whether it's how you write code to how do, if, if your goal is to become the next CTO, making sure you build that empathy and building um, the same language, I think is a key aspect. So I encourage everybody and I'm happy to um, share my learnings and lessons um, because it didn't happen overnight, but I think over time you will start feeling confident that what you have to say matters. And that's all um, I would love to share today. Yeah, thank you so much for this wonderful presentation, which was extremely interesting and engaging. Um, would you like to share um, how people can get in contact with you once again? Before. Yes. Um, so on my yeah on my last slide I have my LinkedIn. So just my name Div Manikam, and then um, if you are interested in where my head's at on what my thoughts are around product marketing leadership and uh, even other aspects of uh, technology, 
you can always read my articles um, on devmanikam.medium.com. So thank you all for your time today. I appreciate it. Thank you. And we hope you enjoy the rest of the conference.